welcome back. I think we've all joined the main room again, so welcome back and thank you. Thank you for coming back after lunch. Um, this afternoon, we're going to have a discussion, a more in-depth discussion about the community mentoring uh, intervention that, that uh, we've been running as part of the I Belong project. And then after that, we have a power walk session, which is a chance to experience one of the activities that we, we ran as part of the I Belong project, which Davini is going to facilitate. And then, I think someone's got the live feed on, uh, the uh, speed the project. That's better, thank you. Um, and so after that, then there's an opportunity to hear some uh, typical um, music from, from Portuguese students and to have a virtual wine tasting. I'm not sure. I think you have to provide your own wine or use your imagination for that part of the activity. So what we're going to do now is, is spend the next sort of hour talking about mentoring. And so I'd like to invite um, Miriam Lutz from uh, representing Osnabrück University to introduce us to the, um, the community mentoring project that she, she uh, has been leading as part of the I Belong project. So Miriam, over to you, please. Yes, thank you very much, Liz, for introducing me. Uh, as Liz mentioned, the st uh, student community mentoring will be the focus of this session this afternoon. And uh, as you were in the session this morning, you heard uh, about the mentoring concept a little bit, and I will go more into detail in this uh, session now. I will again use the key message for introducing you to the I Belong Mentoring approach. And the key message is that we um, hire or that we created the community mentoring program uh, as a set of uh, activities aimed at creating accessible, inviting peer learning communities in higher education. So um, we um, created this community mentoring program, especially for those students who have no experiences with higher education in their families or for students um, of underrepresented groups, maybe some where there's, a, uh, there's also a connection between these groups of students. And um, so the main goals of our community mentoring project is that we want to support first year students and students with diverse backgrounds and experiences by offering an experienced mentor from the second year onwards. And um, with this concept, we want to reduce threshold fears and uncertainties for these students. By creating a social network, we want to prevent also dropouts. And in a long-term perspective, we want to strengthen the sense of belonging of these students. Um, we have created a toolkit, which you also can download on the website uh, now with tips and tricks to implement such a mentoring approach in your institution. And some of these tips and tricks I would like to um, give to you now. So, um, which is important to uh, implement such a mentoring program in the institution is to get collaboration in your institution with colleagues. So get help from your colleagues, get into dialogue with your colleagues about this mentoring idea and get help from them. Then you can also get into the process of creating a mentoring training for the mentors because they have to be trained being a mentor. Um, they have to get aware of their uh, role in the mentoring process. And so it is important to engage them in such a mentoring training. Uh, this is our experience in the process of um, developing this mentoring program. Mm. 
Also for creating such a mentoring program, you can get inspiration from our toolkit with different activities based on self-reflection. After creating this, you can start recruiting mentors and mentees for the mentoring process and also um, get um, into uh, account to create a, a timetable and a guideline for the mentoring process. This is also very helpful um, to, yeah, for you. It can be helpful also to supervise the mentors and the mentees regularly within the mentoring process. Um, so you get familiar with the challenges um, and the benefits from the mentoring from the mentors, but also from the mentees. And um, with this information about challenges from the mentees, you can also um, yeah, create activities to um, uh, yeah, uh, to uh, create some uh, some activities for the for the students um, and to um, yeah intervene the, these challenges. Um, in this morning's session, I saw that uh, some of you uh, also have uh, running mentoring processes. So we are happy when you. Um, would like to share your experiences by implementing your mentoring process, you can use um, the question and answer um, for commenting on that. Um, I would like to introduce you a little bit more in detail about our mentoring approach in the I Belong project. So by creating such a peer mentoring approach, um, we decided to base it on dialogue. Di dialogue um, on the one side, uh, on the one hand between students, but on the other hand also between staff and students. So the community mentor is something like a, like an interconnection between mentees, so first year students and staff, so the teachers and. He has the role to mediate some um, something between these uh, roles. Um, so we are creating relationships within the program between students, but also between students and staff. In the I Belong project, the mentor is on the one hand the key person, so for the mentees, uh, and on the other hand uh, the connection between teacher and students. So the mentor has fulfilled uh, different roles between support and mediation, as well as communicate challenges from the first year students to staff. For these task, tasks, the mentor should bring a personality which is open-minded and helpful um, for the students, for the first year students. And the, the mentor should also be able to listen and to communicate as well as to create trust in the relationship to the mentees. The mentor should also be able to be empath uh, empathetic and reflect oneself. He should support first year students, give advice and share experiences. As mentioned, the implementation of the mentoring scheme um, at the four partner institutions in the project is based on different contexts and on different levels. Um, we would like to share now with you our experiences with the implementation of the mentoring programs at the four partner universities. And I will start with the with the experiences and with the development um, process at Osnabrück University in Germany. In the years between 2014 and 2018, we um, had some experiences with mentoring from our other projects uh, in our course program in the faculty or the Department of Vocational Education and Training. We run one-on-one -on -one mentoring for first-generation students 
And we had a project in which we mixtured the role of the mentors between coach and mentor for upper secondary students. And then we stepped into the I Belong project um, and created a group mentoring to build communities and to create more dialogue between students and staff. And um, this was uh, very innovative at our uh, faculty and in our department. So this group mentoring approach was new for us. Um, and we made it to um, roll out, to scale up uh, our mentoring approach to a university-wide mentoring called OSCA Mentoring. Uh, it's an acronym for yeah, Osnabrücker um, students for first year students. And um, we are very happy that we um, can bring the um, the, the experiences from the I Belong project into this university-wide mentoring approach. Um, and in the last winter semester, we um, started this um, community mentoring approach for the whole um, university, including all faculties. And we have also the, uh, the opportunity to enroll the program in the next two semesters at the Osnabrück University, which is uh, such a great opportunity for us. Um, yeah, and um, maybe something um, to uh, some information to the background. We all are in the pandemic situation, uh, which, um, yeah, which showed that there's a need um, of support from the first year students in the digital learning environment and um, within closed campuses, uh, this mentoring approach was very helpful to welcome first year students in this very um, challenging situation. So yes, that's uh, everything I can, um, yeah, can tell you about the mentoring process at Osnabrück University. And now I will hand over to Marike Möwese, who will talk about the experiences at Erasmus University in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Thank you, Miriam. Um, at the Erasmus School of Social and Behavioral Sciences at Erasmus University of Rotterdam, where um, I'm um, working, uh, there was no mentoring scheme in place when the I Belong project started. So for me, um, well, I was the only partner, so to say, uh, only partner university where no existing mentoring scheme was uh, running um, at the time we started the I Belong project. Um, so there was, of course, a great opportunity for us to learn from all the running mentoring uh, schemes at the three other partner universities, um, and especially to uh, learn from um, experiences of our of the um, yeah, leader of this uh, intellectual output, how we call it in this Erasmus uh, Plus program, so the University of Osnabrück, because they created um, uh, a student community mentoring program, which was really focused on the uh, I belong key messages and the I belong mentoring. And that was exactly what we uh, started uh, to implement in September 2019. Um, and although it was um, designed and developed as a, a group mentoring program, we started with one-to-one -one mentoring. Um, we implemented this mentoring scheme um, on, uh, as a voluntary mentoring scheme. Um, and we noticed that not so many students uh, applied uh, for a mentor. Uh, so we started with one-on-one. -on -one mentoring but then of course as you all know uh, in this academic year uh, we were hit by uh, COVID-19 uh, and also the anti-racism uh, um, demonstrations uh, on global level and suddenly uh, student voices uh, became louder in our university and especially in our faculty uh, and more students were uh, in need of mentoring um, and that resulted in uh, three other uh, programs within my uh, faculty uh, wanting to implement a mentoring scheme. 
there was a need for I belong mentoring, but uh, there was also a need uh, from students on more study skill related um, mentoring. So in two programs, um, uh, apart from my uh, program in pedagogical sciences, uh, we implemented uh, I belong mentoring plus social skills of, so of study skills um, mentoring. And in the fourth program, there was a completely different uh, mentoring program implemented. Um, we moved to uh, group mentoring uh, and now we are in a stage that uh, our vice dean of education in the faculty recognizes the importance of a faculty wide mentoring scheme. Uh, so we are now in the phase that uh, we have agreed on the goals of our mentoring uh, uh, scheme and also uh, the students who uh, we would like uh, to reach with our mentoring scheme. Um, and this means that we will uh, continue the I belong uh, student community mentoring program, but we add the so called building blocks which were developed by our learning and innovation team from my uh, faculty. Um, and those building blocks are really focused on supporting students uh, on uh, the topic of their uh, of, of study skills. So more study skills related mentoring. So this um, package of mentoring will be implemented um, faculty wide from September onwards. So we are now hiring a project leader for the mentoring program of our faculty and within the four programs we are hiring uh, mentor coordinators and that uh, very much relates to uh, what Professor Menenes shared uh, with us before lunch that it's really important to look at the context so we have the mentoring scheme organization, so to say, but to make sure that it's um, sustained in different programs um, and it, it, it's effective, uh, you need to be very much aware of uh, the needs in those different contexts. So that's why we uh, are also uh, hiring uh, four different mental coordinators uh, within the different programs. So, uh, what started as uh, a mentoring scheme in just one program uh, within my faculty um, now uh, scaled to the faculty-wide mentoring, which will start uh, in September. So I'm, uh, I think that's a very good accomplishment uh, that we had as an I belong team to uh, create awareness uh, of the importance of mentoring, of course, with the help of the most important stakeholders in this and those are our students, so uh, first year students, but also uh, um, uh, the mentors, of course, who are involved in our mentoring. Liz, I think it's up to you now for Edgehill University. Thank you very much. I think there's a slide which has got Edgehill on as well. <clears throat> Can you put that on for me, Miriam? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yes, well, Edge Hill University was one of the universities that, that had already mentoring systems in place. And we were working with primary education, and which is a very large program. And they had a pre-existing, and not only pre-existing, but an award-winning peer mentoring scheme. So we weren't, we wouldn't, we weren't able to sort of introduce um, the, the student community mentoring uh, in, in the way that perhaps perhaps would have been ideal or not ideal but that might have been intended in the original thinking about all of this. So we had to look at what we had and so again looking at our context and really work with it. So we we decided so I started by meeting with some of the existing mentors on the program that we were working with and they were um, and, and, and they're, they're second and third year and they're trained and, and they work, sorry, the way it works there, actually, I should say, is that they're second and third year students, we mentor first year students, and they work with the tutor groups. And that's been quite an effective way of making them accessible. So they'll often sit in on a tutor group and then be sort of there at the end so students can come to them and ask questions. 
And I think that was found to be a much more effective way of trying to, of, of mentees kind of connecting with the mentors, particularly in a large program. So the tutor groups break them down into smaller kind of cohorts. And, and so, so two mentors, they always work in pairs, work through, through the tutor groups. Um, but then we, we sat down with our mentors and discussed with them what we were trying to do through the I Belong project. And I have to say the mentors were brilliant. They helped us co-design the first dialogue day that we, we delivered. And they were there and, and an integral part of delivering it because the way we delivered the dialogue day was we had 300 students in a tiered lecture theater and we wanted to create a safe space and talk about diversity and belonging. And so the, the mentors were absolutely crucial to that. And, and they designed several of the activities, the most important of which, which I think is the one where we ask students to, to share with us some of the things they're concerned about and how they can be helped to succeed. And that was really a co-designed activity that the mentors play. They also kind of facilitated the day and they took students out around campus and, and, and took them around and, and helped with the photographs about belonging and, and those various activities. And then the mentors were able to go over to Osnabrück, um, at, it, that must have been in 2019, and share their, their sort of experiences of developing um, and contributing to the dialogue day. Um, what was really interesting was when we worked with the this, this student mentors and asked them to think about diversity, their first reaction was to kind of talk about the fact they didn't really have any diversity, that they didn't see themselves as different. And I think in some ways that was really positive. But what we encouraged them to do was to share their individual stories and talk about the things that they found challenging sort of break down the barriers and help other students feel confident to talk about issues that, that they were concerned about on their transition into higher education. So the first thing that really came out of it from the mentors point of view was perhaps a greater awareness of diversity. And subsequently, in, in light of things like the Black Lives Matter, there's been a greater interest, including more explicit discussion about race, race and discrimination in, in the role and training for mentors. Um, the other thing which has really come out more explicitly from the I Belong kind of focus is to think about how we recruit more diverse mentors so that we make a, a more conscious effort to ensure that we're not just having perhaps students from the more dominant social groups who feel more confident to put themselves forward as mentors. And certainly um, the mentors who've been involved with, with us have been really, um, really open talking about those kinds of issues and, and really encouraging others to step forward because as, as I think um, Miriam was saying, that the role of the mentoring program itself actually has huge benefits to the mentors as well as the mentees. And we were still struggling a little bit about how we might add value to, to the mentoring at Edge Hill by drawing on the, the I Belong project. And so we had a discussion with the students about, uh, with the student mentors about what would help. And one of the things that emerged was the idea that second year students are quite, um, they feel like a little bit abandoned. They've had lots of support in their first year and their transition into higher education. And then when they get into second year, this suddenly feels like some of those support mechanisms have been taken away. There was perhaps a less scaffolded approach. And also the second year starts to really count towards your final degree of classification. So what we've been looking at is how we might roll that model out to second year students. And I think that discussion about rolling mentoring out to second year students has become even more pertinent in, in all sorts of university contexts because so many students over the last year have spent time away from campus. So, so the returning students in some cases will feel as if they are new students and perhaps haven't got those connections to campus. So those are some of the things we've been doing at Edge Hill and some of the conversations and ways that we've kind of tried to improve and enhance our mentoring based on the, um, the I Belong Community Mentoring Model. So I think now we're going to ask Isabel Pinto from Porto University to tell us a bit more about the work that you've been doing in Porto, but we're going to change presentation to that. So I'll just keep talking while Isabel shares her screen. Um, and and then, then we'll invite our two guests to, to reflect on their experiences in different contexts. So thank you, Isabel. Over to you. Don't forget to unmute. Thank you, thank you, Liz, and thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm delighted to uh, share our experience in the in the um, in our mentoring program that is established already since 2011. 
Um, so the CEOP mentoring program supports new students that arrive to the Faculty of Psychology and Education Sciences of the University of Porto towards a positive integration into academic life experience. The students' well-being in academic, personal, social and cultural dimensions are this program main focuses. In other words, um, the SIOP mentoring program is concerned with encouraging students' academic success and reducing risk of dropout, as well as ensuring that the experience in higher education is lived in a space of freedom that encourages autonomy with less perceived insecurity and anxiety and full of new experiences that provided by a social support network that embraces diversity and positive intercultural exchange values. The SILK mentoring program is sustained in some uh, structural dimensions. First, institutional responsibility. This is a program developed by the Faculty of Psychology and Education Sciences of the University of Porto that takes the responsibility for welcoming and onboarding new students. Given the increased diversity of national, national and international new students arriving to higher education, institutions have been gaining more and more awareness of their responsibility on the planning and implementation of integration processes to new students. Peer relationships. This mentoring program is supported on peer relationships as the most fundamental mechanism to ensure a sound integration process. These peer relationships provide new students, the mentees, the opportunity to be supported by more experienced older students, mentors, that participate on a voluntary basis to support mentees academic path. You, early this morning, you were two of our mentors and they were very nice uh, sharing their experience. So pro probably you remember them. These relations are symmetrical and hierarchy free, sustaining democratic solidarity and social equality values consistently reinforced and embraced by all involved in this program. The main goal is to foster good practices and reinforce construction of a positive and democratic academic community belongingness. The mentor support to mentees ranges from basic issues such as registration, classes, teachers, and so on, to more complex topics as is the case of emotional support. With the pandemic, new forms of relationships, privileging physical distance, but also simultaneously social proximity emerged among our mentors and mentees. And finally, the pedagogical dimension. This program is coordinated by teachers that support, monitor and supervise it with an intentional marked pedagogical dimension that benefits both mentors and mentees. This program has great impact on development of students' transversal and social skills. They become to assume an active role in contributing to the integration process of new students and to a new identity about being a student. This new role implies the learning and assimilation of new skills such as empathy development, solidarity, social and civic responsibility. The pedagogic methodology of this program is student-centered, encouraging mentors to assume an active participa participative learning process throughout the experience based on both formal and especially informal learning practices. In addition, the program also offers the opportunity to develop collective activities that constitute collaborative and supportive training processes towards global personal and social development and that emerge as opportunities for valuing diversity and cultural interchangeability. There are some formal training sessions at the beginning of the academic year to inform about logistical issues regarding students' registration, the university and faculty services available to students, the role of other institutional groups such as academic associations and so on. Although formal training sessions occur in the beginning of each academic year, this program is very active throughout the year. The peer relationships obviously occur permanently and this program plans and implements collective events. Some examples of these activities are hosting sessions for new students, welcoming sessions for international students, workshops promoted by mentors, social events and online social events, especially in this pandemic time. The SILP mentoring program covers the three levels of existing study cycles, graduation, master and PhD, although it is more present in the first one. 
Um, the Silk Mentorship has grown not only internally, but also uh, externally. Um, we present the main milestones achieved by this program. For time concerns, it is impossible to approach all milestones, but so we brought the most relevant. In 2013, participation in this program as mentors became recognized by the Rectorate of the University of Porto, which authorized this participation inclusion in the student's uh, diploma supplement. The Silk Mentoring Program gained a physical space, a room uh, in the faculty, which changed the recognition that this program had in the faculty. And it also allowed to experience new uh, types of activities, meetings, social events, study, etc. In 2018, the Silk Mentoring Program proposed the creation of the Portuguese network of peer mentoring tutoring programs, together with the letter of peer mentoring tutoring programs based on the structural dimensions I presented earlier. This network is currently establishing and contributing to share good practices between several mentoring programs across Portugal. In 2019, SEOP Mentoring Program assumes a relevant role in the conceptualization and development of the Porto Peer Mentoring Program, a mentoring program that is implemented in the majority of the faculties within the University of Porto and as well in the Porto residences. This program, although still very young, is gaining more and more adherence from teachers and students in each faculty. All these institutions carefully follow our structural principles in their mentoring program. And currently, a Porto mentoring prog program is a single program, although flexible and sensitive to each faculty's characteristics, and is coordinated by a scientific and pedagogical pedagogic coordinator commission in which our coordinator team uh, assumes a relevant role. This commission has encouraged and helped in the implementation phase of the current programs and also supports teachers coordination in each program, monitors programs and promotes opportunities to share experiences. Interestingly, our experienced mentors also play a relevant role in these newly mentoring programs by providing training sessions for less experienced mentors of other courses and faculties. This last milestone is representative of FUPSEOP mentoring programs potential replication to other contexts, of course adapting to each context specificities, but also respecting the structural dimensions that guide FUPSEOP program. The last two slides, and I'm almost, uh, I'm almost finishing, uh, address some results we observed re regarding new port peer mentoring program in the monitoring process developed last sem uh, semester. This one shows the weight of each type of support provided to mentees and mentioned by mentees and mentors, academic, emotional, faculty services, integration, UP, uh, uh, University of Porto services and, and, and with pandemic. We highlight the weight that the emotional support gained in this pandemic year. It was very important. These peer uh, mentorship relationships uh, gained a relevant role in this in this in this area. And the last one shows satisfaction that mentees and mentors feel regarding the Oport to Peer Mentoring Program. As you can see, the majority is satisfied or very satisfied with the program. These results are corroborated by qualitative responses that we obtain from students that enhance how mentoring program is important for their academic experience and to a satisfactory sense of belongingness. We expect to expand the mentoring program uh, to the remaining faculties. There are two still remaining of the University of Porto this next academic year. So thank you so much for your attention and I finished the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and now we're very, we're very um, pleased to be welcome, uh, to, be, to be joined, sorry, by Fumane and Nadia. And both colleagues, I think, will introduce themselves. But what I'd like to do is, is they're going to think about the work that they do in their own institution or their own sector. So first of all, Fumani, could I ask you to, to introduce yourself and, and tell, tell us a little bit about where you're from and about the mentoring that you have in your own context and, and perhaps to identify something that you might be able to integrate from the I Belong community mentoring that colleagues talking about. Good morning. 
I was on mute, sorry. <laughs> so I was saying hello, everybody. And first of all, thank you so much for, for this amazing opportunity, uh, for listening to these amazing achievements from these three mentoring projects presented. It's very inspiring. Uh, and honestly, it's making me thinking that we, we have a lot of work to do uh, on our side, on my side. So my, my name is Nadia Cruz. I'm communication and marketing manager of Natixis in Portugal. Natixis is a, a French banking institution of, uh, with several business areas, but mostly working on um, corporate and investment banking. Um, and here in Portugal, um, we've installed uh, a, a center, an IT center of expertise, but also with some banking support functions. And we are working for uh, the 38 countries where the, the bank is present. And when we started here in, in Portugal, uh, uh, it was just IT at the time, and as you may as you may understand, uh, the IT labor market is is super super competitive, not only in Portugal but all around the world. So it's very hard to find uh, IT engineers and IT professionals to to hire. Um, and we when we were building the team at the time, and speaking about end of 2018, uh, we realized that we had only 13% of women in our team, which was a super super low number uh, and we got really concerned the, the first uh, question we we asked ourselves was okay so what is wrong with our recruitment process what are we doing wrong in hr but that was not the thing that is really a, a big problem in terms of the it labor market so we have uh, we have a, a very low number of IT professionals in general, but also very few women uh, among the IT professionals that exist in the market nowadays. So this is when uh, our project, our mentoring project, Champion for Change, uh, was born. So we decided to create a project uh, really to tackle the root of the problem. Uh, and we totally believed that the problem for having so few women um, in IT was really on the education. So we realized and reading a lot of studies uh, that uh, still today um, in, in, at the education that we receive at home from our parents, from our families, but also uh, in the school, um, women are still very directed uh, to jobs that are more uh, linked to taking care of others, uh, to uh, social sciences, for example, while, um, while um, men are usually more directed directed to the STEAM areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we decided that um, we should do something as a company, uh, and we decided to create this Champion for Change project, really to have an impact in our, in our community, and really to share the experience of our very own employees. Um, and um, with, as time passes by, we realize how special this experience has been for our mentors, for our employees, and also for the mentees. We have been working mostly um, with schools here in the North region uh, between with students between the seven and the nine grade. And we don't exclude anyone. We work both with, um, with girls and boys. Um, and we um, basically show uh, how diverse can be your career, how many, how different tasks, how different jobs you can get if you choose uh, a STEAM area for your, for your career. And this has been really an amazing experience. So the project, I can say that being launched in the beginning of 2019 is still in a very, very beginning. Um, but we are trying to do to link ourselves to other associations, tech communities, to as much as as many schools as we can. So we can really uh, take our word and to have our employees having the pride to share their own experience and their own story with these kids and inspire them. And at the end of the day, I think this is the, the, the most important message. At the end of the day, the message can be, okay, I don't want to follow IT or engineering or any, any of this area for my future career, but at least you, you know how it is. At least you can uh, learn from this experience and we we before the covid we were taking kids to our to our office but we were also taking our employees to the schools and this interaction this networking and 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 all this knowledge that can be shared in a 
very, very informal way in this mentorship model can be really impactful in, in, in the future. And it also brings a lot of pleasure, a lot of pride, uh, a lot of personal personal reward to the mentors. And, and here, I think this, this is where, where we can really link to the results, the main achievements we're presenting today. I think it's very important for us to focus not only the, on the mentees, but also on uh, the amazing reward we can bring to the mentors and, and the sense of belonging and the sense of community we can have with these, with these kind of projects. Thank you so much. I, I was wondering if you thought there was anything that you might take from the kind of I belong. So, so the idea of focusing perhaps on the mentors as well. For sure, for sure. We'll come back to you, but I want to ask Jumani, could you, would you like to tell us something about the mentoring that you've been doing in your university? You need to unmute yourself. You're still on mute, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay. Jumani, we can't hear you because I'm not sure I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm going to have to come back and ask Nadia <laughs> if you can tell us a little bit more about things like how you train your mentors and how you support them with their role that they do. So on, on the side of our mentors, so this project is mostly developed and animated, let's say like that, by the communication team, which is my team. But what we do is try to build an inside the company, and we do this with a lot of other topics, is really to build a community. So what we do um, a, a lot of times is really to work with the mentors in and organize a lot of brainstormings and debrief sessions and to put them in contact in between each other because we are a big company. We have more than two, uh, they have uh, than 200, sorry, 1200, sorry, employees already. So we are a big company and a lot of them don't interact with each other, each other on a daily basis. So what we do a lot is really to organize these brainstorming sessions, these networking sessions uh, like they are really a community because we call them like that they are our champion for change volunteers community and we put them in contact with each other really for them to exchange their experiences and I find it very important for them when they have any difficulty uh, spending a day with a student or accompanying a student in a specific process I think that sharing these very specific cases and examples is super important among them we have also already we are working to have a, a very wide training for all our communities, not only to Champion for Change, um, but also to all our communities, also in terms of uh, communication skills, how to really work the sense of belonging of your target, um, how, how to work all these kind of topics for us is also very important, specifically in the communities of our company that really interact with a, an external audience. But I would say the main takeaway in terms of preparation and training, I would say that network and sharing of experiences among volunteers is one uh, of the key takeaways. I'm on mute now. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we're still trying to connect Fumani in. I think she's listening to, to the um, recording on YouTube rather than here, here in the sort of the live room. So if you can hear us, Fumani, if you can connect into the Zoom room, then we'd really love to hear about the work that you've been doing to develop some mentoring in, in South Africa. But at the moment, we can't, we can't connect to you. So we need you to join us in the Zoom room, which we can see you, but we can't, we can't hear you at the moment. Um, 
Have you had a chance to look at the resources, Nadia, that have been produced by the I Belong project? I wondered if you thought any of those might have any relevance to, to your context, which I think is, is a really interesting application of these ideas. Yes, and especially uh, looking, especially looking uh, at the, the, ah, if Mani is here. Just finish your sentence, Nadia, and then we'll let, uh, we'll let Fumani come in. Do you want to finish your sentence, Nadia? <laughs> no, I, I was I was just saying that um, I've 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 done a lot. Uh, I've done some some reading. Sorry, not explored very deeply, but especially after today, especially after watching the, the three presentations before, uh, I will definitely I will definitely look for um, for more inspiration on these projects, and I'm really looking forward to keeping in touch with with all of you, so we can try to have more takeaways and more inspirations to really develop our project. So uh, while you were presenting, I was really thinking, okay, so there are some things we really need to start um, structuring more and uh, measuring better, I would say. And this was very inspiring because of that. Oh, thank you so much. And it's great to see it working in a different context. And I'm sure people have got ideas from the work that you've been doing too. Fumani, I'm so glad you've managed to join us here in the Zoom setup. Thank I know you. it's a bit complex. Um, and some of us have the advantage that we did it a couple of months ago for the first time. So. It will be really lovely if you could just tell us a little bit about the mentoring scheme that you're developing in your university and and anything that you might think that you might take away or have learned from the I Belong community mentoring that we've been talking about. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the, the whole issue has been overwhelming, listening, getting excited and uh, getting frustrated and uh, wanting to implement the I belong now and then. So uh, again, thank you so much for the invitation. My name is Fumani Khanari. I'm from South Africa. It's uh, quite cold now, it's winter in the province of uh, the Free State. Uh, but to cut the story short, um, I've taken so much, but uh, what we have currently, and I must say that uh, I'm quite very new in the current university. But uh, being somebody who's passionate about uh, learner success, I had to go all out and exercise my agency and find out what has been happening. So mentoring is actually conceptualized from the strategic uh, uh, leadership of higher education from, from the DVC's point of view. So we have uh, the Dean of Student Affairs as the body which uh, oversees all the issue of students. So the mentoring programs, they start from the student, uh, the Dean of Student Affairs. And uh, there are actually different uh, activities done. For example, there is mentoring specifically for residents. And this is what happens when the first year join the university, they come earlier. Uh, they used to come before the, the pandemic, they don't come a week or two weeks earlier so that they get used to the culture of the university that taught about the strategic plan and uh, the ethos and the principles of the university of, of the free state of, and um, um, so in each race, they, they identify the leaders from the previous years, second years, so they become mentors. And then they compete according to the residents and they compete based on the principles of the strategic plan of the university. And they have to also produce products is a huge event. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, it's so limited because if I was not somebody who always go out, I wouldn't know. Because I remember one time I was traveling on the street and then the whole street was blocked, the main city. So the campus is within the main city. And there were police uh, all over simply because the first year we're demonstrating what they are bringing into the university and what they've learned and how they're going to integrate with the community, uh, which is uh, within the university. So they need to demonstrate even before they start the classes, the understanding and the principles of the, the, the university of the free state, for example. And uh, the DVC or the vice chancellor has the priority. And I remember this from last year, uh, one of the projects uh, that uh, came from the vice chancellor was Project K. So the mentors in the first year, they were working on the Project K and 
try to, to link it to other principles as enshrined by the, in, uh, the constitution. How do we care for one another as students from different backgrounds? And they will have to show even uh, object products that they can demonstrate. And those projects, they, they become part and, part and parcel of the landscape of the university. As I speak, we still have an ocean, um, animated ocean, which is standing somewhere next to the residents life and they win competitions and then they got funding. So it's about culture, it's about understanding the, the language of the university and uh, before the, status, uh, the, the class starts. So besides the Dean of Student Affairs, uh, there is a dedicated scaling up or project, which is called scaling up for, for impact. And this is again run by Center for Teaching and Learning. So there is a specific center which focuses on the scaling up impact, particularly the student learning and success. So that center has got a director and assistant director and the, the staff working within that, purely working with the student to ensure that they don't only get integrated, they don't only belong, but they learn to succeed. And that is the highest or the largest uh, body in the university that provides also employment for the student. Because currently we have about 352 students working as mentors through tutors. And uh, I think uh, I learned a lot today because uh, those programs are already there, but we know them as tutors, not as mentors. And of which to me, it's something that I took from today to say, uh, to, to what extent are these uh, concepts uh, used and implemented in various universities. But Center for Teaching and Learning, it's responsible for the tutors slash mentors. And the same processes like I've seen from the uh, belong uh, toolkits, they, they, they apply. So the adverts are sent out. And teachers ourselves will also have to provide or, or write an expression of interest to say, are we interested in tutors? Do we want to work with tutors? So we express interest. And those who want to be mentors or tutors, they also express interests before they can even apply. Then from that expression of interest, the whoever is in charge because every faculty has got a representative who links with the center for or the the head of the center for teaching and learning uh, department and each faculty will identify lecturers or teachers who express interest and you got to be interviewed by the departmental uh, representative to say why do you need tutors for what and do you understand the, the programs that I've offered? How all, all the, the, the questioning, so you are taken through that process and uh, you have chance to reflect to say, do, do I really need them? Do I really, is it replacing my teaching? Because some, there was kind of like a report that you get after the first initial interview. So those are some of the processes that take place. Then the advert will go to everybody because it's about giving opportunity to all the students. And based on the certain criteria, again, they use what they call the supplemental instruction principles. So based on those criteria, then the tutors slash mentors uh, are evaluated by uh, both the faculty rep and the head of the Center for Teaching and Learning. And based on that, and depending on the, the availability and the criteria, those who meet criteria, then you'll be allocated the tutors per module. I must indicate that uh, currently they're targeting what they refer to high risk module. And I like the way they changed the word because um, in another university, they used to call them a uh, student and risk, only to find it's not only student who are risk, it might be the structures, it might be us not being able to 
create opportunity. So they focus uh, on high risk modules versus uh, student at risk simply means those modules which uh, have a high rate of failing. So those are the mentors which are going to assist and then assist the teacher and uh, integrate and interrelate with uh, the, 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 the students. And uh, it used to be face to face, but now because of COVID again, the online programs are there, the university provides things like Global Protect, uh, and then they link with the, uh, the private centers like uh, Nadia's case, IT specialists, where they give zero rated bundles. But the, the challenge again that uh, exposed uh, our mentoring programs is the in existing inequalities because of uh, the, the, the history. So there wouldn't be mentoring without going back to the history because having access to data bundles did not translate to belonging. It actually created a more exclusion because other students are located in the geographical areas whereby even if you have a laptop, if you don't have electricity. So it went back to the, the real issues, the structural issues that are brought by things like apartheid. And uh, the feedback that we got from the, ourselves as lecturers and our mentors have been our vulnerabilities. So we meet as uh, lecturers, we share our experiences, what it's called best practice. Today I learned about interesting practices and it was easy for me coming from a rural area to understand what is it like to be in a deep, deep rural area. And this ties back to the keynote speaker to say, mentoring is about the heart and the head, you know, because for some colleagues who are not from a deep, deep rural area, um, they couldn't understand. So the issue of resistance to change, they couldn't understand why the student were not submitting assignment. Uh, they were still stuck with uh, some terms of assessment. They couldn't be creative to say, instead of writing a, an essay, can you sing a song and uh, send it uh, through WhatsApp? So we had also those challenges, but it was again an eye opener. And this link, and uh, you'll excuse me because I'm trying to link what is happening and also what I've learned. So the issue of team, what I love about the I belong, which I think to me stood up, so stood out is this issue of um, team teaching reflection, because it is at that point where you go to, 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 to reflect even about our own insecurities, our own privileges, because I had to, at some point, play a devil's advocate, remove myself from being a lecturer and go back to my roots as a deep rural girl to say, I still don't have electricity. Right now, if I were to go to my original place, I would still not be able to teach my learners, my, my students. This is a really good way to connect into the next session. Uh, thank you for drawing attention to that idea that we really need to step into other people's shoes and that yes. mentoring provides that opportunity for students to have a voice. Yes. But we yes. also have structural changes. And, and I think there are lots of issues that came out of what you shared with us, Fumani. Uh, I think the idea of the leadership being supportive is, is really significant and we perhaps haven't talked enough about that in this conversation today. And, yeah. and I like the way that as, as Marika talked about it, Erasmus, you've been connecting the academic and the social through your mentoring program. But we have to wrap up the session. So thank you both to Fumani and Nadia for sharing your thank experiences. You. Thank and you so much. Thank you so much. And I think uh, this is just the beginning of one of those uh, global engagements. Thank you so much. Thank you to colleagues for sharing their experience too. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>